y'all, it's Riley again. Today we're going to go over basic commands to use in the Linux terminal window and a little bit more about how Linux works in general. So far, I've only shown you commands used to navigate and list the contents of folders. We haven't actually changed any files yet, but that's what we're about to get into. I've made a test folder to show you a few examples. I've basically created a bogus file system for us to play around in. If we were to list the contents of the folder we're currently in, ls, we would see our folder and our bullfrog.jpg. The next command I'm going to show you is the copy command. The abbreviation is CP. CP is for copy. Now we can't just run that, we have to be copying something. Let's copy our bullfrog.jpg. And let's create a file called bullfrog-copy.jpg. That's pretty straightforward. Notice that the command came first, then the file that we're copying, and then where we're going to send it. Press enter. Did you see that on the right? It just popped up. In fact, I bet if I go to my desktop on Windows, it'll have popped up there too. Yep, look at that. That's how cool shared folders are. And you might be wondering, can you copy things that aren't in your current directory? Yes, you definitely can. For example, here on the right, I'll show you in this frogs folder, inside of this cute frog pictures folder, which I should rename without spaces, I think. We have another picture of a frog. First things first, let me rename that folder. Let's get into the cute frog pictures folder in our terminal window. Current directory, frogs slash cute frog pictures. Enter. Great, we're in the right folder. Let's say we wanted to copy that bullfrog picture into our cute frog pictures folder cp space now i don't feel like typing in the entire file location so i'm going to say the parent directory of our parent directory is called bullfrog.jpg and i want to copy it into our current directory into a file called bullfrog.jpg I messed up and added an extra slash, so I'm going to do that same thing again without it. You might be under the impression that I'm lazy about typing, and that impression is partially true. But I also want to show you all the time-saving tips I learned the hard way. I'm going to press the up arrow key. That's interesting. That was the last command I typed. I'm going to press it again. Look at that. It's the second to last command that I typed. Okay, it should work now. Look at that, on the right, bullfrog.jpg is now in our current directory. And I didn't even have to type it again. Typos are too easy. Please make use of the up arrow key if you make a mistake. If you didn't have a window open on the right showing you that everything you did happened, you could check that bullfrog.jpg successfully got copied into our current directory by listing the contents again. Yep, those are our two contents. If your eyes are glazing over with all this talk of directories, file names, and commands, that's pretty normal. Usually once you've wrapped your mind around the concept of the command line and memorized a few of the basic commands, it goes so much faster. There's a command similar to the copy command, it's called move, shortened version is mv. When I say shortened version, you can only use mv, you can't type in the word move. And that's sort of like the rename command 
So say we wanted to get rid of the hyphen between spur and toe in spurtoe.jpg. I would type spur hyphen toe.jpg space and then the name that I wanted. Maybe spur toe one word dot jpeg. All of a sudden, up there on the right, you notice that there's no hyphen anymore. Similar to the copy command, you can rename something over something that already exists, but unlike the copy command, you're not making something new. Deep in the bits and bytes of your computer, the file for the image stays the same, it's just referenced a little differently. So the timestamp for Spurto would stay the same, even though this bullfrog timestamp is only five minutes old. Let's say we wanted to rename our bullfrog Spurto. Let's type in mv bullfrog.jpg and let's move it to Spurto that JPEG. What do you think is going to happen? Did you notice that on the right? This picture used to be called Bullfrog, and the Spurto picture is nowhere in sight. That's why you have to be really careful about what order you put things in. What if you wanted to replace the Bullfrog with Spurto? I have one last command to show you for this introductory video, and it's the remove command. It's the same thing as delete. If we wanted to remove something using this graphical interface on the right, I would right click, and I would press move to trash. If I want to do it over here, I type in rm for remove, space, spur toe, dot jpeg. I would press enter, but I'm not going to do that yet. What if we went up a folder? What if we were in the frogs folder and we wanted to delete the entire cute frog pictures folder? Type rm cute frog pictures of course, you're probably not looking at the exact same files as me, but you get the idea. And then, now this is the interesting part, we do dash R for recursive. That means not only are we deleting the folder cute frog pictures, we're also deleting what's inside. There it goes, no more cute frog pictures. If you're trying to delete something and you really know you want to delete it, but it's not letting you, you can type dash F for force. And of course, if you want to recursively delete something using the force command, make sure R and F are in alphabetical order. There's one last trick I want to show you that might save you a little bit of time. Say we go up to this test folder. So we're in the test folder in both windows now. Say we wanted to list the contents of the frogs folder, we can do ls space capital F. If you press the tab key, it will suggest what you might want. Look at that, it says frogs. I hope this tutorial was useful and that you can use these commands when you're using the Linux terminal. But these are not all of the Linux commands and they're definitely not all of the dash options. These are just the ones that you definitely are going to use if you need to do anything. If you're looking for more in-depth tutorials, I have two suggestions for you. The first one is Software Carpentry. If you go to software slash carpentry.org and go to Lessons, they have really great lessons about the Unix shell, which is very similar to the Linux shell. Another good written tutorial system is linuxcommand.org and they take you through the basics of commands and the basics of writing shell scripts, but what you're really going to want to make use of when you're first learning is this website, google.com. Thanks for watching this tutorial. If you have any questions or suggestions or requests for new videos, make sure to put them in the comment section and I'll try and reply.
and everyone make sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this.